Welcome back to the channel everybody, I'm Ham Radio Dude and thanks for checking out the channel. Recently I made an episode where I showed you how you can make your own ground spike out of a 3D printed part and a tent stake. And I was waiting for somebody to ask me, well what if I don't have a 3D printer, how could I make one? And to my surprise nobody has asked me that yet. Well, what if I don't have a 3D printer? Oh, thanks Chuck, I appreciate that. Today that's what I want to show you, I want to show you how you can make a very simple and very affordable ground spike from Home Depot or any other hardware store for that matter. Let's jump into what you're going to need. If you don't understand what is going on here, I do recommend that you go back and watch last week's episode because I go in more detail about what it is we're doing. But we're creating a ground stake, basically a way for our antenna system to, to hold on to something and go in the ground or use radials. And what we want to do here is we want to start off with the most basic part that we're going to need. And by the way, any of these parts that you find with the exception of one, maybe two, can be found at any local hardware store. The one part that you're going to have a hard time finding is probably going to be an SO239 to a 3 ace studded adapter. Now you can get these on Amazon.com for something along the lines of uh, maybe $8 or so, maybe $9. And typically they'll come with a nylon washer as well as a lock washer. So we're going to set those to the side for just a moment and let's talk about the hardware store. So next you take your trip to the hardware store and you get all those parts and this is going to be simple. The first thing is going to be a 4 inch by 4 inch electrical cover or electrical box cover. And it looks just like this. As you see there's uh, a groove on each corner of the cover where typically your screws would go in uh, if you're covering up an electrical box. Which is perfect. I do want to make a note here though. You can see that this one doesn't have a hole in the middle. They do make them with holes in the middle which might be even better for you. This one cost about 75 cents and the one with a hole in it is about $1.50. So once you grab this go ahead and set it to the side and you're going to need to find yourself four screws. These are three inch screws. If you could find larger, great. But uh, these are number 10 uh, 24 thread or 10-24 and what you're going to notice is these screws fit into the grooves pretty good right there. You see that? So <laughs> this is really going to be simple. The next thing that you need is you're going to need four little nuts and four little lock washers that will fit into the, uh, the screws right here. Go ahead and put the lock washer on first and then just go ahead and screw your nut on. I'm going to repeat that three more times, one for each of these corners, but what I am going to do here for at least two of them is I'm going to install my radio system. And you guys have seen these a couple of times. I have these little uh, ring adapters that I put into power pull adapters and my radials, I have five radials per power pull adapter that plugs in at uh, roughly 10 feet each or so. And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and put that ring adapter on just like that and then put the, uh, put the nut on. So let me repeat that a couple more times and I'll be right back. That took me less than, I don't know, three minutes to assemble, but I do want to make some notes. I have power pull adapters on here because I really like power pull adapters for radials. But as a new ham or somebody who just doesn't have the means, you might not be able to get your hands on some power pull adapters and that's fine. What you can do is you could just use these ring terminals and go directly to your radial wires if you so choose. Now if you wanted to have five radials on here just get five ring adapters and place five on each screw. So five, 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 20 radial adapters at 10 feet. That's pretty awesome. I just want to mention here real quick that 200 feet of radial wire was just an example and it's going to depend on certain things. We could talk about all that in a later episode or if you're curious right now, go check out DX Commander. He's got a bunch of great information. Uh, but I think you see the point there that you could adapt uh, slightly to the, the modifications that I've made to better suit your, your needs or, or work with what you have. Uh, this next one too, you might not have a drill and as you can see here, I've already not centered but I already drilled a hole here in the middle of the plate. Now this hole is going to be to fit my 3 8 adapter through like you see here and uh, we'll get to that more part in a minute. But what if you don't have a drill and it's possible you don't have a drill. Well if you do get this junction box that has a little hole or 
for the middle, I'm sorry, this electrical cover that has a hole in the middle, you might be able to force it out with a, like a pick or something like that, but I'm not positive. So there's a couple of options there, but regardless, next thing that you wanna do is make sure you get a hole in the center of this plate. And the rest is easy. So now we have our 3 8 SL239. And as we discussed last week, this bottom portion is ground. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go straight up right here. And what you're gonna notice now is this bottom portion is hitting this whole plate, which is also going into the ground, meaning it's also gonna to connect to the radio wires, kind of like a DX commander would, right? So that's pretty simple. But we need to secure this now, and there's two things that we're gonna do. We're gonna first take this nylon washer, we're gonna place it over here and on top. And then we're gonna take our normal washer and place it on top here. And by the way, this SO239 connector typically comes with a 3 8 uh, by 24 uh, female connector to screw on. Let me show you. Typically you'll see these 3 8 inch female to female adapters or couplers that come uh, with the actual connector themselves. But if yours didn't come with a connector, you can get these at Ace Hardware as well. So you're just gonna go ahead and screw that on now. And look at that. So now we're gonna go outside, put this in the ground, hook our radio wires up, hook our antenna up, but not before testing continuity to make sure we're not grounded out where we shouldn't be. And also, one more thing that isn't necessary but does help out a lot is one of these little L connectors. These PL259 to SL239 adapters are really nice because once we get these screws in the ground, we're still gonna be able to access the coax from any one of these corners, which again, very convenient. So next up, we're gonna just check to make sure that we have continuity where there should be and there's no continuity where there shouldn't be. And to do that, I'm using my Fluke multimeter. Uh, as you can see right here, uh, this is a portion of the antenna, as we've kind of already mentioned, and this nylon washer is preventing the antenna from touching the ground. Great. Let's go ahead and actually touch on the antenna and touch on the ground. We have no continuity, so that's a good thing. Uh, then we're going to go here and we're going to go on the outer shield of the SO239 that's coming out of the bottom here, and we're going to go on the ground plate here. Great. And just to make sure just make sure no continuity there. And then I like to always just check my power pull adapters to make sure that I have them right inside. Okay, and actually I could even go here because we know the whole ground system is all intertwined. Uh, we're good to go. Let's go set this up and see how it works. Ah, uh, Okay, so next thing I'm gonna do here is I got I got the antenna on and I have the ground plate ready. You can see I've already spiked it in the ground once, but uh, I'm gonna put the coax on first. And the reason I'm gonna do that is it makes it a lot easier than having to try to dig down under this plate to put the coax on later. My radials are going out that way. And all we gotta do to put it in the ground is uh, just watch this, okay? You could either just get on your knees and push it in or you could just lightly, I say lightly and gently, step on each side, you know, just a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, as you're digging it gently into the ground. And then uh, let's go ahead and put the antenna up. Now this is a perfect spot and you can see it's being hidden by the bushes. That way if the HOA Karen comes around, uh, she'll never know. I'll just don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, let's go check the SWR, try to make some contacts. Let's wrap it up with a couple of things. Let's talk about this project. It was a lot of fun to build. Uh, I really like thinking about the engineering aspect of things and just walking around Home Depot or a hardware store and saying to myself, yes, this will work. Hey, maybe I can incorporate this. And that's what I was hoping for you to do, to be able to get an idea of how you might think outside the box and always be constantly thinking of how you could adapt something to your needs. There's gonna be people who argue that this is a horrible solution and this is stupid. And what I say to them is if it is working and it's not harming anybody, then it's not stupid and it's actually a great idea. Don't stop thinking and don't stop challenging yourself to think about new concepts, new things, and how you could incorporate them and adapt them into your environment. With that, let's just make a couple of contacts and call it a good day. I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, until next time, thanks a lot. 73.
Whiskey 9 Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Foxtrot. Whiskey 9, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Foxtrot. Uh, Foxtrot? Yeah, Whiskey. Yankee Tango. Whiskey 9, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Foxtrot. W9, Triple L, uh, this is Guy in Mississippi. 